I it's Dom from the MS Guide. I encourage viewers to ask questions, and they do. Richard Lee, who I don't know where Richard lives, but Richard asks a question the kind that you think, why didn't I think of that myself? And it's a brilliant question, and it's going to be answered for us because it needs an expert by Dr. Sharmali Nanapavan, who is a consultant neurologist specializing in MS at Bart's Hospital in London. So, it won't be a long video, but Sharmali will tackle this question for us, and I'm sure we'll know better and sleep better because of the nature of the question once we know the answer. In the meantime, it's the end of October now in 2021. I started this channel back in March 2021. I have 660 subscribers as of today. So thank you all very much. Your support means an absolute ton to me. A couple of people helped me out through the Buy Me A Coffee link, but I'd be really grateful if you could too. It helps run the channel. So there is links in the description of the video if you feel that you can help me out. And if you can't, I completely get it. That's not a problem. But you could do one thing for me, please. You could click subscribe. It tells the magic algorithms at YouTube that my videos are landing properly with you and that the MS Guide is a good thing. If you could do that, that would be superb because half the viewers are not subscribed. Anyway, on with the video. Shromley is going to answer Richard Lee's question and we're going to do that for you right now. Hi, Shromley. Thanks very much for joining us. Good morning, Dominic. How are you? Good. I'm fine. Thank you very much. I'm really pleased that you agreed to help up. A viewer, yeah. a subscriber to the channel called Richard Lee, asked me a question, and I had no idea. And I asked a bunch of my pals with MS, and nobody had any idea. So it's landed in your lap. Um, let me read you the question, Sherman. I'd appreciate an answer because we all now want to know. Richard says, we know our immune systems attack our myelin around our nerves which then affects various parts of our body depending on the lesion location. So obvious things like drop foot and bowel disease, it's our bowel control. Can and has it ever affected organs? Is there any chance of lung or heart issues? So I'm guessing Richard's earlier on in the disease, but maybe you could shed some light on this. You know, why doesn't it affect our heartbeat, for example, in the way that it affects our foot drop? Um, so Dominic, this is a very complicated question. Um, because it's not just simply about lesion location, it's also about the amount of le MS lesions you have in the brain. Right. So the more you have, the more likely you are to affect um, organ function. So um, just to give an idea, your brain controls everything in your body. As your brain ages, the support for growth of organs also is taken away and you get general aging. Um, so what happens in MS is you are speeding up some of this process by the amount of lesions which are accrued by taking away brain space. This and, is brain uh, volume loss that we all yes. hear about a lot. It's the shrinking of the brain, yeah? Yes. So particular problems like breathing are not seen early in MS. They're seen much further along in the condition and with more progressive disease. And uh, this is where you start to see loss of respiratory muscle, chest was muscles, which then have an impact on breathing rate. Right. You may also have swallowing issues as well, which are linked to this, which add to the problem. Now, um, whereas um, cardiovascular dysfunction may be there very early on, particularly um, the control of blood pressure um, by the autonomic nervous system. So when they've looked at this, and this incidence may be up to about 90% in MS individuals, um, which is really interesting. So um, the autonomic, not... Charmley, that that's the bit of the brain and the nervous system that makes your heartbeat, makes you breathe, keeps you standing up, all that kind of stuff, that without thinking about it. That's what you um, mean. Yes. So it is a complicated balance between uh, um, activation and mm -hmm. um, down, down regulation. Right. OK. Um, so um, there's a particular area in the brain called the brainstem, which is a portion. So you've got the bigger brain and then right, it all. Right here. Yeah. And then it all funnels down into the brainstem. And there are critical areas at the middle, top and bottom. And the tracks for the autonomic nervous system pass up and down. Right. 
So a single lesion in an area called the medulla oblongata, which is at the bottom of the brainstem, can completely affect your breathing and your cardiovascular heartbeat. Um, similarly, um, problems at the top and the middle of the brainstem can involve the breathing, affecting the breathing rate. So um, these are unfortunate areas to have the lesions, but they can acutely affect um, uh, organ function, particularly breathing and the heartbeat early on in the disease should you get a lesion there. But generally speaking, um, the dysfunctions are more prominent later on with the progressive disease. Right. I okay. hope that answers your question. It, it does. It, it's good. It's more than I thought. I think more than many people thought. But I mean, in order to put this in some context, if put it in one in a thousand, I know it's an impossible thing in one way, but you know, out of a thousand MS patients that come past you in your clinic, you know, how many people are severely affected by this to the point where it really impacts on their life, would you say? It's very rare. Um, right. It's a matter of how often you look for it, really. Um, right. So I, I see it more in progressive disease. Right. And that's where uh, I'm looking for it specifically. If right. I started looking for it in early disease, I might pick up the more subtle abnormalities. Hmm. Um, but there are, as you age also, there are other factors where your core morbidities or other medical health problems start to impact on this. Right. Um, yeah. But in terms of figures, I would say that uh, in later on in the disease, I'm looking at about 20 to 30 percent right. of okay. people coming through my door right. where I'm actively looking for this and trying to manage it. So. Um, I you can treat it as a doctor, them. providing you pick it up. Is it something that, that can be dealt yes. with between you and the patient? Yes, it's important to um, treat the respiratory problem. So we, I refer to a respiratory physician to do sleep studies to see if there is obstructive sleep apnea. So this is where breathing is dysregulated during the sleep when most of the brain goes to sleep mm -hmm. as well. So um, Mine's um, asleep half the time. <laughs> and um, what you find is that they can give breathing machines which can help with that right. Um, right. so there are it's important to pick it up early so that you can actually positively impact on it right okay so that's look i really appreciate you coming on and answering uh the incident's greater than i realized but it's um you know again like i said not the faintest idea before we spoke to you so Thank you so much, Charmely. And um, I'm looking forward to telling Richard that this video is up. So have right. a lovely day. I hope Happy your clinic help. is manageable today. I know it's super busy for you all the time. So take care. No problem. Thank you, Dominic. Cheers, Charmely. Bye-bye.